Uncle Dan. Hey. A little peek behind the curtain here. Okay. Um, for our listeners, typically we we tease out a little bit of what's to come uh, in the up in the segment the between you know, and then we toss to the uncle who's doing the segment. It's a little and sizzle. We make a little sizzle. Yeah, a little yeah. sizzle. And and yeah. I gotta say, I, I got nothing. Yeah, <laughs> Uncle Mark told us what he was going to be doing. He used words, and yeah. we recognized nothing and and stared blank faced into there the you void. Go. <clears throat> well, so to, it's just another day that ends in a Y then. So take it away, Uncle Mark, before my cat does. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Weird. Uh, well, fellas, we've covered a lot of religions and or cults on this here show, and mm. I think that's a pretty interchangeable term anyway, but that's not the point of today's thing. And so many of the ones we've covered were either very obviously or at least arguably created for bad or nefarious purposes. What? Most of, yeah. Most of that's... which boil down to the leader or founder wanting power over credulous dupes and unlimited access to their money and daughters. It's usually daughters yeah. with the, with the fewest number of birthdays under their belts as possible. Um, <clears throat> if they can get all three of those things, they either end up in a mass suicide a few years later, or they get themselves a fancy choir and a big organ and go into the real estate development business. <laughs> or maybe a couple thousand years later, end up with a teeny tiny country made of golden statues and guarded by Swiss guys who look like nutcrackers. <laughs> and no one can really understand how the fuck any of that managed to happen. <clears throat> anyway, on rare occasion, a religious group, at least outwardly, gets going because the founder or founders believe they can do some actual good in the world. and oh, claim That's the to, worst kind. Yeah, that's a, they don't last. And they claim to have had some sort of inspiration to foster peace, love, and understanding in a world rocked by war, greed, Violence and the pernicious presence of raisins in too many fucking things. <laughs> raisins have nothing to do with today's segment. I just fucking hate them. And this is my show. So deal with it. <laughs> okay. That is Doug, not the opinion of all of the members of this program. Counterpoint. Boom. Exactly. For Doug, it's spiders. For me, it's fucking raisins. So <laughs> anyway, religious people. <laughs> are there, canon, are there huh? people putting spiders in cereal that I don't know about? <laughs> Maybe. They should now. <laughs> yeah. Um, religious people can and do make earnest attempts to make the world a better place. Some have turned out fairly well. Others, as we explore on this show every week, turn out far less well. Uh, you guys know about Esperanto? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a fine idea. It was a constructed language birthed into the world by L.L. Zamenhof in 1887. You made that name up. No, I, he did. He's he was the great-grandfather of L.L. Cool J. He was. <laughs> He was the LL Cool J of, of late 19th century Poland uh, and, and also an ophthalmologist of all things. Uh, Zamenhof wanted to create a universal second language for all the people of the world to foster peace and understanding. And it almost entirely did not become a thing. Right. <laughs> that is, except for 1966's art house horror movie starring pre-Star Trek William Shatner, Succubus. Yes. <laughs> A whole movie shot in Esperanto because the director thought it would be a spooky creative choice. How about that? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'll include, I just read the craziest article about that movie. I'll include it in the show notes. It's very worth a read. Anyway. I have no idea about that, but I will say this. I have a friend who is taking the uh, – what's the app? The, the, the app that teaches you languages? Like Rosetta Stone or uh, – No, it's, it's one of the – anyway, yeah. he's studying uh, – Esperanto now and I was like why the fuck why? are you doing that and apparently there is a worldwide network of Esperanto people mm -hmm. speakers who will let you couch surf wherever you were anywhere in the world really if you uh, if you speak Esperanto oh it's like a little secret society yeah I love it that's very cool oh, might, yeah. may, might be worth learning a few words so uh, anyway <laughs> Total diversion. Today's religion is maybe a little like Esperanto, yet it has nothing to do with it. Possibly an earnest attempt to gift the world a philosophy to make things better. How rare is that, you guys? How great a price could we value such a pearl at? So <clears throat> let us travel to the verdant, gorgeous, distant shores of that long, skinny motherfucker of a country, Vietnam. Hmm. Have you guys okay. been to Vietnam? I have been to Thailand. I have not been to Vietnam. I thought, I thought you went to Vietnam. I'm no. dying to go. I'd, it's a, definitely the top of my list of places. I wanted to, to but I had bone spurs. So. <laughs> I tried to go five <laughs> times, but just couldn't make it happen. So. Just couldn't. Yeah, they wouldn't let me. No, I, I, I would definitely love to go. I know we have some listeners there, so maybe we need a how-to heretic Hanoi hangout meetup one of these days. Boom. Say, guys. Yeah. Make it happen. 
<laughs> are you so, kidding me? We are in the United States of America. We're not going to be allowed to go anywhere in the world for no. a decade. Feels good to be a pariah. For, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, the, we're the COVID-19. Yeah, uh, it's land. our major export. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So in this gorgeous country, to which we very much owe several apologies, the three biggest religions are, can you guess, guys? Uh, I'm going to uh, say Christianity is one of them. I'll take it. Catholicism, second largest. Okay, so it's got to be, is it, is it Buddhism? Or, Buddhism or? is by far and away the largest. Okay. And the third largest, I know you're we're about to say, is, say it with me, cow die. Exactly right. <laughs> cow di- this is true. What in the world is cow die, you may, or may be asking? Well, it's our little Esperanto of a religious idea. Think of it as a coexist sticker brought to life by some eager Buddhists having a seance. <laughs> I could stop there, but why would I? <clears throat> so, for the third largest religion in a country with nearly 100 million people. Did you know they had 100 million people? I in did Vietnam? not know that. Wow. That's a lot of people. <clears throat> people um, not, Asians know how to pack them in. I'll say that. Sure, too. They're very, they, they kill at Tetris. Um, I had no idea it was that big a population, but there you go. It, it, so it must be quite ancient, right? Nope. The first person to receive a transmission from Cao Dai of his new world religion was a minor official in the French administration of Vietnam, a guy named Ngo Van Chu, who heard the call in 1921. Cao Dai, which means high place or high tower, was air quotes, was then air quotes revealed to a group uh, of Ngo Van Chu's followers, some Vietnamese mediums and spiritualists on Christmas Eve 1925. Oh, Vietnamese listeners, you can tell me how badly I'm, I'm about to butcher these names when you see me at the Hanoi meetup. But the good news was the good news was given to uh, Pam Kong Tak, Cao Quin Kerr, and Cao ha- Hoi Sang, who saw the divine eye of Cao Dai, Almighty God, which has become the symbol, or more accurately, one of the symbols of this madly over symbolized young faith. <clears throat> now, why were these formerly Buddhist, uh, Buddhist folks having a seance? The obvious answer might be that ancestor worship is extremely common practice in Buddhist Vietnam. And that might be a possible answer, but it actually turns out that Vietnam or this group of people there um, was not immune from the fever of spiritualism that was sweeping much of the Western world in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It was so hot back then. It was the hottest thing. Um, And it was led by figures we've discussed, such as Helena Blavatsky, Alistair Crowley, and of course, even Rasputin, Russia's greatest love machine. So <clears throat> the original visionaries of Cao Dai, or Cao Daiism, as its practice is called, were very much part of that mostly Western movement. And as we've talked about, seances, table tipping, Ouija boards, spirit mediums, and all sorts of hooey like that were part of that spiritual sideshow. Man, yeah, we so- white folks export all the wrong things. <clears throat> yeah, Can I just say? <laughs> a lot of stupid shit, for sure. <laughs> Um, the cow dais continued using seances equipped with a coconut drinking ladle with a pen in the end as their vision of the Ouija board's planchette until 1975. <laughs> so, you know, Perfect. have you ever watched a, 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 a you know, movie set in Asia where when someone drinks out of a well, they have like a long stick ladle thing? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that. That's what that is. <clears throat> so somehow a pen in the end of that would would tell you what God wanted you to do. <clears throat> so it's exactly what you want. What did the eye in the sky tell these mystics of the Mekong? Well, the almighty god Cao Dai told them to found his new church, officially called Dai Dao Tam Ki Fo Do, or the Great Way of the Third Redemption. Uh, this time uh, this time we are in now is the last great age before total destruction. So right. Cao Dai wished to unite the great religions of the earth. So it incorporates the giants of the Asian world, Confucianism, Taoism, and Chinese Buddhism, but also absorbed large portions of Christianity, mostly the Catholic variety, Islam, and Hinduism. <clears throat> so huh. for once, dearest Jews, you seem to have been left out of something. I count that as a win. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, it never goes right for them when they're included. Yeah, they're never asked. They're just simply included, which is just, <laughs> it's got to suck. So they believe all religions are derived from the same God and truth through various messengers and are all equally true and divine. Or were, of course, until Almighty Cao Dai established his last true, ch- true and final church. So <laughs> this is where it starts to get interesting. So Confucius, Buddha, and Jesus are all major prophets of the religion. And, and it has walk into a bar. Yep. Yeah, and, and nobody speaks the same language. But Esperanto saves the day because it's all their second Boom. language. 
Uh, and, and maybe some of them will be surprising some of these lesser saints to some of the listeners. So there's 16th century government official and poet Win Bin Kim, naturally, mm, and perhaps right. most obviously Sun Yat-sen, who led the revolution to overthrow the Manchu Qing dynasty and became the first president of the Republic of China in 1912. Okay. Interesting. Um, because, of course, and I can hear Uncle Dan straining to scream out the name of the next saint because it's almost too obvious and that name is, of course, that of the French poet and novelist, author of Hunchback of Notre Dame, Victor Hugo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously. Yes. I was going to say Teddy Roosevelt, but same diff. Uh, uh, maybe. Well, Vladimir Lenin, hardly a figure that anyone, most especially himself, would describe as a messenger from God, is included in another layer of saints. So Great. Great. Yeah, we're prob- I'm surprised we're not in there as well at this point. So <clears throat> <laughs> we're, we're uh, working on it. Like most of the traditions they sampled and repackaged for re-release— they believe in a heaven and hell and that there, there is a Mrs. Almi- Almighty uh, God cow die, uh, her name being Divine Mother. Uh, and the genders of their almost equal co-godliness are expressed in the yin and yang symbol found in the pupil of their divine eye symbol, which is a left eye, by the way, because that is associated with the right brain, seat of creativity, abstract thought and religious experience. Good Lord. Remember when I said this was a symbol heavy religion? <laughs> yeah. Let's chat about just one of the very, very many, the divine eye. Hmm. At the main temple, <clears throat> there, uh, there are over 50 divine eye symbols that fall into five different categories. The center, uh, the center of the, the main altar is a huge ball with an eye painted on it, and it's kind of a stellar globe <clears throat> thingy. And the eye is painted just above the North Star in Ursa, the Ursa Minor constellation. The outer facade... Uh, on the outer facade is an eye with 35 rays of sunlight radiating, representing all, uh, what they call the three major religions and five main doctrines of the world. Other eyes have 16 rays, nine going upward for the nine levels of heaven, which will get confusing in just a minute, and seven rays going down, representing the seven human emotions, which are mostly to be controlled or suppressed. Uh, some eyes are in triangles, some in clouds. Basically, you feel like you're being watched the whole time you're there. <laughs> Uh, this building is like one of those nightmarish praising beasts from the book of Revelation. Uh-huh. All eyeballs. I love uh, it. <clears throat> as far as symbols go, cow dye looks to me as if the Masonic order was invented by Asian Buddhists rather than a culty European Protestants because it's got like keys and suns and moons. It's madness. So uh, it may be, but probably not a nod to the Mormons. There are multiple heavens and, wow. uh, and they are on planets, you guys. Hey, 36. Guys. I think the Mormons are in there. Do we got a heavenly mother? We got a. We got I know. There's a lot of cross pollination here, isn't there? Uh, we have the Mormons have an eye. Isn't there an eye symbol? I think they. I don't think. I think they stole some stuff from the Masons. But I, I mean, it's not. I can't think of there being kind of like an all-seeing eye type thing in Mormonism. No, I swear I've seen. Anyway, but anyway but there's 36 planets uh, and the multiple hells are not on planets but 10 different planes customized to the sin of the deceased very much like the buddhist vision of hell called naraka we discussed in episode seven or the celebrated hell in dante's inferno with its multiple descending circles and we my fellow earthlings are the lucky 68th of the 72 planets oh a a grouping somehow distinct from the three thousand worlds and four great cosmic regions which can be clearly explained by, yeah, no fucking idea. And this all sounds like somebody got into the, uh, like, like there's just administrative nightmares happening all over the place and they just had to include everything. Yeah, this sounds like one too many Mekong whiskeys and <laughs> somebody came up with an idea. <clears throat> and while Kaodaism uh, looks and feels very much like a sort of Buddhism, its structure is closest to that of the Catholicism the French were kind enough to bring with their bayonets. Uh, they have a pope who is called the Pope, uh, who lives in a complex in Tainin called the Holy See. They also have cardinals, bishops, priests, and nuns. So <clears throat> by the 1950s, this brand new religion had attracted one in eight South Vietnamese people. Wow. Uh, which is growth the Mormons dream of, but have only ever seen in their secret stock portfolios. So <laughs> they, they began to accrue some, uh, some real influence and presence in the country. They formed what was at first a small security force that grew essentially into a private army that sided with both the occupying Japanese and then after them, the French, 
and then their two, uh, two, 2,500 strong brigade of men was absorbed, absorbed into the South Vietnamese army and fought against the North in the Vietnam War, which they, of course, rightly called the American War. So <clears throat> after the fall of Saigon and the end of the war and the communist takeover of the South, the Cao Dias were rightly expecting some major retribution, and there was quite a bit. Uh, all their churches were seized by the government. Four leading Cao Dai priests were executed in 1979, and loads more were broken and tortured in prisons. Uh, several parts of their worship was banned, including the seances that were their method of speaking directly with God, Cao Dai. Um, and while the properties have been returned and, and the jailing and the killing has stopped, for some reason, they're still not legally allowed to practice the seance anymore. Huh. <clears throat> That's because um, they're kind of spooky. You never know who's going to be on the other side. It's <laughs> scary. It's usually Houdini, but it could be just it could be Victor Hugo. Could and be any we'll, number of things. You never know. You want to un- unleash Victor Hugo into the modern age again? I don't think so. So, <clears throat> and other than their army and support for occupying powers, they seem kind of cool. They're vegetarians, <laughs> mostly pacifists. Uh, obviously, their soldiers killed in the employ of their government. But other than that, I couldn't find a body count of any kind, which is normally the act three of our stories on religions. Right. W- were um, they pressed into service during the, the war? Yeah, they fought against the North. They, 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 I don't know if they were pressed. It seems like they were willingly fought against the, the communists in oh. the Vietnam War, which is why there was retribution when the communists took over. Gotcha. Right? Um, and their main temple, uh, with all the radiating and uh, eyeballs in Tainan, is pretty cool if you look it up. With columns rack, wrapped in pink dragons and shit, eyeballs everywhere. Um, so there they are, friends, the Cao Dais. It's I not it. one religion, it's all of them. <laughs> it's the kitchen sink of faiths with a little something for everybody, even or perhaps most especially those who enjoy the works of Victor Hugo. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm just desperate for the day when this podcast finally checks off the last subject off our list. So I don't appreciate it, Mark, when you add subjects that are not, that are not even on our list. <laughs> just prolonging this misery. Yeah, that's the whole point of this podcast is just get to the end of the list. <laughs> get to the end. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, it's just a, a task, a chores, chores chart, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it's funny is, I mean, I'm not obviously any kind of a scholar, but Jesus, I thought I knew some about the Vietnam, uh, the history of Vietnam th- vis-a-vis the war. Yeah. And I had no idea. I had never, I had never heard of these people. And there's some, in, there's some in the States because obviously there was a huge amount of uh, relocation to the States at the end of the Vietnam War, right? Yeah. You mean after we won the war? After we, after we won the war, Dan. And uh, the, so there are apparently Cao Dai uh, churches and practitioners here in the America. Cool. I'm going to convert. Yeah. You could, you could do way worse. So yeah, yeah. sounds like sounds it. Sounds great. Enjoy, awesome. guys. All right. Well, thanks for that. And uh, and maybe we should just uh, move along. 